Well, another monolith has popped up, this time along California's central coast. It's made of stainless steel, stands roughly 10 feet tall. This is the third structure of its kind to appear in the last few weeks and the second in the U.S. People discovered a monolith in Romania last week around the same time its twin disappeared from a Utah park. Hey yo, and welcome to Gallum's Corner. All right, today is a very exciting vlog. One of the mysterious monoliths. Um, you'll know what I'm talking about because hopefully I've worked out how to put some kind of a montage of them at the beginning of the video. Well, one of them has appeared on the Isle of Wight. This is the third one that has appeared in the world now. The first one was over in America. The next one was over in Romania. And now there's one here on the bloody Isle of Wight. Um, loads of you have tweeted me, making me aware, saying I should do an investigation. And I absolutely am bloody going to. I mean, this is probably the most exciting thing to happen on the Isle of Wight for quite some time. Now the festivals aren't happening because they're bloody COVID and stop it. In fact, it is easily the most exciting thing. So absolutely, we're going to go over and investigate. Um, and it's going to be a difficult day. It is right on the other side of the Isle of Wight. It's a pretty deserted side of the Isle of Wight. Um, and public transport is arse over there. Unfortunately, I am a boss wanker. So it's going to take me some considerable time to get there. I've been having a little look on Google Maps. Um, it's going to take me about three and a half hours to get over there on the boss. Yeah, about an hour from here, then an hour and a half wait in Newport and then another bloody boss. It's going to be arse, but I think it's worth doing. We've got to find out what is going on. So what I'm going to be looking for is the origin of this object, what I think it is. I mean, when I first saw them appearing, I thought, oh, it's just got to be some kind of advertising campaign, crap new album coming out, crap new movie or something. Uh, but the fact they're in such random places like Romania, the Isle of Wight, uh, does make you wonder. I mean, I don't think it's anything supernatural. I don't think it's alien. Um, I mean, you can't rule it out. It is 2020, but I don't think it's that. But we're going to go and have a look. I'm going to be looking at the object, the monolith itself, what it looks like, how it might have got there, how people and animals react to it. Yeah, it's going to be a thorough bloody investigation. All right, we have a very long day ahead of us. So I'll give you a little outfit check because I know you like to, you know, Come and inspect the fashions, get some ideas and stuff, and then we better get moving. Vogue, Vogue, stack of poles. Okay, so this is what's happening. I've gone for a double jumper situation. It is massively cold at the moment, absolutely bloody freezing outside. I'm going to be hanging around Newport for an hour and a half. I'm going to be on the bloody bus, then on the exposed beach. So I've gone for a double jumper, both super dry. Um, on the bottom, I've gone for some skinny jeans, standard really. And then on my feet, I've gone for the, well, what used to be beautiful yellow and black Jordans. Bit tatty now, but they are probably the best pair that I've got. Still got the Old Faithfuls, the classic orange ones. They haven't quite given up the ghost yet. They are limping on, uh, but they're bobbling on the soles. It's almost worn through. So I can't really trust them for a long journey. So yeah, these are the ones I'm wearing. Right, okay, we've got a massively long journey ahead of us. Let's get bloody moving. Okay, I've just purchased a hat because it's bloody freezing. I'm now going to go and recharge with a Macca's. My first one since uh, lockdown has ended. So, yeah, it's been a good five, six weeks since I've consumed the, well, not delight, but, yeah, I'm having a Macca's. <laughs> So, Macca's was consumed and greatly enjoyed, uh, but there's still like an hour until the boss goes. It's a very remote area that I'm going, almost no boss's body go there. Um, got to waste more time. I've been wandering around town like a fart in the wind, but it's so bloody cold, I've decided to take refuge in Costa Coffee. Um, it's kind of weird, isn't it, how the world has changed? Even though I'm in tier one, I almost feel guilty for coming and sitting in a coffee shop. Um, yeah, everything's bloody changed. It's so strange. But, I'm very bloody excited. There's a lot of effort to get over there, but I can't wait to see this mysterious bloody monolith. Right, I have finally arrived, and by the looks of things, um, I'm not the only person who is eager to see this. That's quite a crowd. Let's go and have a look. So, before we go down to the beach and get some close up investigating done, I thought we'd go up onto the cliff and get like a, a bird's eye view. Perseverance in getting this down there. That's the car park. Look at how many steps there are down to the bloody beach. 
as I walk towards the monolith, I try to clear my mind of any preconceptions that I might have to soak up the atmosphere, the power, the, the, the aura that the monolith was emanating. I also tried to pop out my mind that I'd consumed nearly a pint of Fanta with my McDonald's and a whole cauldron full of frothy coffee and I was desperate for a pee. Unfortunately, the public toilets at the beach were closed. I did think about trying to find a quiet section of the beach to go and have a little pee, uh, but due to the extreme cold, I wasn't sure that I'd even possess a bloody penis to wee from, so I just tried to pop it out of my mind and concentrate on what was happening. As I got closer, a couple of things became clear. Number one, it was really Really bloody tall, taller than me in fact. Number two, it was definitely a man-made structure. I could see the wooden strut sticking out from the beach. I decided to move in for a closer look. Close up, I was struck with an appreciation of just how much effort had gone into making this thing. It was absolutely huge. It must have taken ages to make, to move down here, to erect on the beach in the middle of the night. I was also struck by when you're close up to it, you almost can't see it. What you can see is a reflection of the beautiful scenery around you. I retreated back to a safe distance to appreciate it from afar again and also to try and note the effect it had on the nearby dogs that were walking past it. Not much to be honest with you, humans seem to be way more interested in it. At this point I decided to kind of reflect upon what I'd seen and head back to the bus stop because if I missed this bus I'll be stuck on the beach for two hours and I really did need to pee by now. Right, investigation has been completed and now back to today's default position of um, waiting for the morning bus. It's pretty cold and very windy here and I'm going to sit on the seat and process it before I give you a full debrief because it's just too cold to hold the phone, my hands are probably freezing and also actually I do want to kind of sit and think about what I've seen, process the information before I give you my, my full track analysis but it's been very interesting and nothing else. Once back in the relative warmth of the boss, I decided to while away the journey home by playing my favourite game of how jealous am I of your house. In this case, very bloody jealous, bloody Richie. Right, it's the next morning now, and I've had time to fully decompress, process what I saw, and also to finally bloody warm up a little bit. Alright, so, um, since I visited the monolith, I've done a bit more research, and it's come out in the media today that an Isle of Wight-based artist has taken credit for creating the monolith. Um, it was pretty clear when I kind of visited it that it was definitely a man-made structure, um, and also the ones around the world, other artists have been taking credit for it. I still don't fully understand if this is like a uh, like a, a planned thing if they've all banded together and decided to do this um, it's kind of like the crop circles isn't it obviously made by humans but I still don't really understand why what I will say is I don't think it's any bad thing it was a lovely day out it's got people's interest paint um, you know everyone's down the beach visiting them it's getting them out of their house in a safe environment where you're not going to catch the covid and stuff and um, it was bloody beautiful as well looking at it down on this lovely beach with that nature reflecting right back at you i mean obviously me being me i would have liked a proper mystery to have solved i would have liked a proper alien structure to be there and something to really get my teeth into but given the fact that i've spent most of the last month in the house i'm i'm giving it a thumbs up to be honest with you it got me out most of it was spent on the bloody boss but it was bloody beautiful when i got there and i experienced something different so whatever the reasoning behind the artist creating these i think it's no bad thing Right, hopefully you've enjoyed this vlog. It's been a little bit different. If you did, please do leave a like. If you didn't, please do leave a dislike. And yeah, thank you very much for watching.